Hello. Today we're going to take a look at this 5.1 BMC that I bought a couple of years ago in an auction. I bought the engine pretty blind. It was on a pallet, a bit online, and this is what I got. And it arrived without an injector pump. So uh, this winter I spent a bit of, little bit of time on it in the workshop. And as you can see, I've fitted a mount from a 1060 and a six cylinder Minimac pump off a Ford lorry or Ford tractor, I'm not quite sure what it's off. I picked it up at uh, like a car boot stall at Landud No Tractor Fest a couple of years back. Anyway, while fitting the pump, I found that I couldn't get it to time up. The timing was about 50 degrees out, which made me scratch my head a little bit. But it is a chain driven timing case engine, so there is a possibility that the chain has jumped. Um, I've had it running, it doesn't seem too bad, I don't think the camshaft is uh, jumped particularly, just the injector pump gear has jumped. To get around the problem, because I didn't want to strip the engine down and spend a lot of time on it, I like to get an engine running and run it up and find out what's wrong with them before I go into them so I can do everything in one operation rather than keep taking it bit to bits every time I find a problem. So to get around the problem I had a second keyway cut in the injector pump drive coupling so that I could move the pump around the required amount to correct the timing error and eventually I got it to run. So now here we are I've got it on this stand, I've coupled it up to the Medino, which come out of Bathgate and then Gainsborough and then a few other places before it landed with me and we're going to run it up and uh, see what we can do with it. But before I do that I'll take the camera off the tripod and we'll have a walk around the engine and I'll show you all the different little bits on it what I've done with it, what's what, and then we'll have a go on the dyno, see how many horses it can produce. We'll start with the fuel supply. As you can see here, I've just got a five litre can with a bit of diesel in it, which I keep topping up. And down there is a little 12 volt electric uh, fuel pump off eBay, pushing the fuel up through a filter and into the Minimac pump. And there you get a good view of the coupling uh, bolted onto the back of the vacuum pump. It did have a uh, foot mounted CAV mechanically governed pump. Uh, so I had to put the alloy mount on off a 1060 to receive the Minimac. And you can see all them pipes have had the ends changed because it was a different size uh, nut on the end. But it all works quite well. And uh, we've got a 465 air filter pressed into service just to uh, stop the birds going down the intake or anything else. While we're this side we'll just have a quick look here. The shaft I've made up, as you can see it's the lorry prop shaft with a bit of lemon tube welded on and it goes into the uh, dyno and that uh, sheet of plywood I'll pull over before we start it up so that I don't uh, manage to do a triple somersault and wrap myself around the PTO shaft. Coming to the front here, I've uh, put the hose pipe onto the bottom hose so we can put a bit of cold water in it and uh, the bypass hose I've actually blocked so that it has to go through the pump and through the bottom of the block and come out the proper place. Obviously it's nothing like uh, the flow that you'd have when it's in a lorry or a tractor but it stops it overheating and cracking while we do a little test. And here screwed in the side a little oil pressure gauge and it uh, registers a nice healthy 40 to 60 pound when it's running so uh, things can't be too bad. A few oil leaks on the side of the engine, I think it wants a new rocker cover gasket, a bit of oil running down the back there and uh, we'll come around now to the dyno. This is an old uh, Moore and Wright dyno uh, down here is the handle that you wind it up to load the engine 
there's a rev counter here that I've put some marks on because these old things don't read the too true speed and over here is a dial and it's calibrated at different speeds this outer dial is calibrated at uh, 3000 rpm on the engine shaft which is what I'm driving uh, the inner one here is for about 620 on the PTO shaft and that one's 540 on the PTO shaft so you can read the speeds off if you want to run at a different speed to what it's uh, calibrated for you have to get a pencil and paper and a calculator afterwards and, and work it out but uh, she's an old girl but she does the job and uh, that's about it I'm tripping over the drawbar on the dyno we've been all the way around it now so uh, I think the next thing is we'll put the camera back on the tripod and uh, I'll run her up I'll just give you another view of this uh, mini mech mounted on the back of the vacuum pump something you don't see every day because the ones that had the uh, vacuum pump tended to either have an inline CAV or a hydraulic governed CAV pump um, not the Minimac, but I use the Minimac because they're fairly reliable and there's quite a few about, so uh, you can get hold of them. I've now started up the engine, and as you can see, I've turned on the hose pipe for some water, and I've got a few bubbles coming up in the thermostat housing there. So uh, it looks like we've got a liner or a head gasket, and this is one of the reasons that I like to run an engine up before I put a spanner to them so that I can do all the jobs in one hit. Uh, down here I've put a bit of spring on the uh, pump so I can level up on the dyno. So now we'll move the camera around to the back of the dyno and uh, see how many horses she can produce. Now I'm going to pull the string on the engine to rev the engine flat out. Obviously when I do that you won't be able to hear me talking. So I'll rev the engine flat out and then wind the handle up and you'll see this huge needle come up and I'll pull the engine down to 2000 revs and then we can read off the horsepower on that scale. So here we go. Well I've stopped the engine now, there's no point trying to talk over it while I was doing the dyno test but uh, when I pulled the string and revved the engine flat out it went up to about 2600 and then I wound the handle on the dyno to pull it back down to 2000 and read off the horsepower on the scale on the left and she was producing about hitting, or not producing but hitting the 135 horsepower mark but obviously this is only doing 2,000 revs and that's calibrated for 3,000 revs so two-thirds of 135 horsepower is about 90 horsepower at 2,000 revs which for a 5.1 I think is about right they produce just a little bit over 100 horsepower but I think you have to get them up to about 2,300, 2,400 to do that so the engine doesn't seem too bad it might improve a bit when I get all the valve timings and camshaft timings and injector pump timing is absolutely spot on we appear to have a head gasket or liner leak because we're getting some bubbles out of there uh, other than that it don't seem too bad an engine um, not sure how is the best way to work on them whether I've got to make this engine stand to turn them over and roll them about or actually put it in a tractor and then work on it while it's in the tractor because it seems an ideal height to get underneath the tractor and work but I'm not a fan of it now I'm getting older but there you go hope you've enjoyed the uh, demonstration with the dyno happy tractoring everybody